All right, so today we're going to have a look at uh, Windows 11 versus Windows 10 performance. But before we get to the benchmarks, I just want to clarify one or two things here. So today we're testing with the Core i5 14600K of CPU. That is paired with 32 gigabytes of uh, DDR5 6400 megatransfers per second CL32 memory. And I'm using an RX 4070 Ti Super. I used the 560.94 driver. That was the latest when I started the recording. Since then, there's been a new driver. And all games have been fully updated. Windows has been fully updated in both. It's a clean install. I bought a new drive and I reinstalled Windows 10 and Windows 11 uh, cleanly, fully updated, fully driver updated. Then I made sure that both copies had hardware accelerated GPU scheduling enabled, made sure that game mode was enabled and also VBS uh, virtualization was disabled in the BIOS. So core isolation is not an issue here. When you disable virtualization in the BIOS, you don't even get the option for memory integrity or core isolation. That was disabled in, uh, in both cases. I mean, it's always disabled on my system. I don't uh, use it at all. And then I started my benchmarks. And then I saw that there was a big discrepancy between Windows 11 and Windows 10, up to 25% in some games. So I actually had to reinstall Windows 11 again, just to see if that fixes the problem. And it actually did. So these results are actually with the second clean install of Windows 11. I don't know why Windows 11 has uh, consistency issues when doing a clean install. Nothing changed on my end. Everything was exactly the same as the first install, the same drive, the same image, everything. So anyway, yeah, we are just having a look at the differences between Windows 10 and Windows 11. So I test, tested a bunch of games, CPU limited, GPU limited with DLSS, with ray tracing, with our DLSS, with DLAA, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, you can see, I've actually showed you the averages 1% and 0.1% lows on the screen as well. Uh, just that uh, you don't have to sit through the whole benchmark run, but uh, just to verify all my results, I've got all the results on screen as well. And yeah, you can see that Windows 11 in Horizon Forbidden West is actually slightly faster on the average as as well as with the lows. And actually with the faulty install of Windows 11, it was around 15% slower than Windows 10, right? So luckily I did the reinstall of Windows 11 and then I got the accurate results if I can call it like that. And then next up we've got Space Marine 2. Now I'm not testing at multiple resolutions here. Uh, the game is very CPU bound anyway. And yeah, you can see that uh, Windows 11 is slightly slower than Windows 10, not by much. And it might be due to run to run variance here because the difference is only like 3% in basically all the metrics here. And even though the 0.1% lows are better in Windows 10, you'd be hard pressed to actually notice this difference. As I said, it might vary just the run to run. Uh, uh, there might be just some run to run variances here and that might be the difference. Now, Cyberpunk was actually the one where I saw the biggest difference, right? With the, the faulty, I'm going to call it a faulty Windows 11 install. There, I actually had an average of 205 frames per second with Windows 11. Now, after the reinstall, Windows 11 has an average of 222 frames per second the lows are a little bit uh, lower with the windows 11 but I, I don't know the the stuttering when it comes to the 0.1 percent lows it's a little bit inconsistent although with the windows 10 it it's pretty smooth all the time right I, I ran these benchmarks just to make sure that all the shaders compiled correctly everything is fine not that uh, cyberpunk has a shader compilation st uh, step just to make sure that uh, all the shaders are actually compiled if there were any and yeah you can see that windows 11 actually pulls ahead by quite a bit by around 10 percent in the average but the biggest difference is actually in the 0.1 percent lows where we are seeing 121 frames per second with windows 11 and 152 frames per second with windows 10. Now I also ran Cyberpunk fully GPU bound. Yeah, we are at 1440p on the high preset with the LAA set to native. And uh, there's really not much between these. The averages are pretty much the same. The 1% lows are pretty much the same. And Windows 10 has very slight higher 0.1% lows, but that's really nothing to write home about. The biggest difference here actually comes in the form of VRAM usage. I know that uh, for this specific benchmark, I 
did not manage to get the size of the RTSS overlay the same, sorry about that. But you can see that on the right hand side with Windows 10, we are using around 5.3 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas with uh, Windows 11, we're using 6.3 gigabytes of VRAM. Not sure what that is about. As I said, it's a clean install on both just the driver updates and uh, fully Windows updated. So the AMD branch prediction update was installed. Not that it makes a difference with Intel apparently, but yeah, you can see that it's just the VRAM usage that's a different. And as I said, the applications, everything were identical on both. So not sure why the VRAM usage is that much higher on Windows 11. Now, next up, we've got Ghost of Tsushima. Here I've got 720p low with the LSS set to performance just to enforce a full CPU bottleneck here. And there's a little bit of a difference, 10 frames per second in the average, and the lows are slightly better with Windows 10. Nothing much to write home about, but it is it is apparent that Windows 10 does perform slightly better than Windows 11 in this title with these settings. Now, when we become fully GPU bound, once again, 1440p on the very high preset, DLA is set to native. I mean, DLA is native. I just keep on reminding people. But yeah, you can see now the averages, the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows are pretty identical. 0.1% lows are actually slightly lower in Windows 10. It can be attributed to anything, like it's not the exact same time of day, not that it makes that big a difference in performance. But next up, we've got uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. And this game, I actually thought I would see the biggest difference of them all because this game is extremely CPU heavy. This is, uh, there's a planned update to improve CPU performance once again, but unfortunately it's not out yet. And yeah, you can see that the, the performance is slightly better on Windows 10, but not much, right? So there's absolutely no reason to now go rush and uninstall Windows 11 or format to your drive and reinstall Windows 10, start everything from scratch. As you can see, the performance gains aren't really that big. Now, here with Spider-Man, I do have uh, ray tracing enabled as well, as well as uh, DLSS quality. And the frame time graphs with Windows 11 it's a little bit more erratic than with, with Windows 10, and it does translate to slight micro stutter. And you can see that uh, even with that, we are very, very CPU bound, even with ray tracing enabled. Ray tracing is actually very CPU heavy in this game, but the performance is pretty much identical between the two versions, right? It's just the frame time graph is a little bit more uh, erratic, if I can put it like that. Now, next up, we've got Diablo 4, and uh, I put this one in due to popular request. And it's very difficult to line up your gameplay with Diablo 4, but I think it gives you an idea here. You can see that uh, with Windows 10, it's, it performs around 10% better. That that's pretty much what I've what I've seen so far with Cyberpunk. It was a ten percent difference with the um, Ghost of Tsushima. It was around a four percent difference, and then with Diablo, it was another ten percent difference again. And it's actually very apparent in the one percent lows, not so much in the zero point one percent lows, which are pretty much identical here. But the average, as I said, is around ten. 10% better with Windows 10. Not the end of the world. I mean, I do play this game locked at 158 frames per second anyway, so this is not going to make a difference for me. I just enabled the LSS balance to make it a little bit more CPU bound, right? And then lastly, we've got Black Myth Wukong, and I run this specific sequence purely because of that. There are traversal stutters in this game, and there comes another one. And uh, I mean, I've, I've actually run this specific scene three or four times before I started my recording. And the aim here was, even though we are fully GPU bound, I just wanted to see if uh, Windows 10 actually handles the traversal stutter better. And <laughs> to my surprise, it actually started for a longer period of time than Windows 11. And that's 100% repeatable, which is very, very strange to me. All right, there you have it, Windows 10 versus Windows 11. As you can see, sometimes Windows 10 does have an advantage, but then again, Windows 11 also sometimes has an advantage. All right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.